Right, hello everyone, welcome back. It is the Saturday after the Wicked Dicey Spring Retreat. Uh, my voice has recovered from the weekend, so I figured now is a good time to do a little recap video. Um, I'll probably, this will probably be part one of the recap because uh, I will likely have on one or two of my teammates um, to talk about their games and the weekend and stuff like that uh, as well. Uh, but I figured I would get one video out where I talk about my games at least and thoughts about the tournament and all that good stuff. Um, I will not spoil our team result uh, at the beginning, so you'll have to listen to the end to find out how we did. Um, don't want to don't wanna spoil the surprise or anything like that. Um, try to be a little bitter about that. Uh, it was a great tournament. Uh, the Wicked Dicey guys uh, did a great job running it. Um, it was at... So the whole, the whole situation, I think I talked about this in my, um, in the previous video with Jake, um, but now that we actually went, you know, I actually know <laughs> how it turned out. Um, the whole situation, it was at like a summer camp kind of deal. Like they rented out the summer camp with the dorms, et cetera, et cetera. So like the 40K side was set up in essentially like the cafeteria building um, where the food was. And then AOS, we were like, three to five minute walk away at another pavilion um kind of in a in a big building that had like basketball hoops and stuff like that um so we took up probably half of that building and then people were like playing basketball and volleyball on the other, other side like after their games were done um which was super fun um so yeah we we took up like half of that space uh and the organizers afterwards were like this is great this is bigger than last year like we want to double the size of this next year um let's get some more people out here um, I think it was an amazing tournament, and I want it to be bigger next year. I don't know if I quite want it to be double next year, um, because while there was plenty of space to put more tables, there's still only two bathrooms in that building uh, for double the amount of Warhammer players, <laughs> and uh, I don't know. That that worries me. And just, like, the, the rest of the infrastructure, like, we were all in dorm rooms, so, like, each team had a dorm room um, with, like, four bunks. That were actually pretty decent. I was I didn't know quite what to expect, but like the bunks were good. The mattresses were like a solid four or five inches thick. Um, they were pretty comfy. Um, it did get kind of hot in the room, so like we slept in the rooms with um, sorry we slept with the window open to like stay cooler, um, which probably wasted some electricity because the heat was on. But sorry, universe, planet, etc. Um, anyway, the point of this. So we were in we're four person dorm rooms with like four bunks and it's five person teams. So like everybody was kind of stealing one mattress from one of the unoccupied rooms for the fifth person to sleep on the floor. And so like again, if we if we double the amount of people, I'm like, where where do the other half sleep? Like we there was space that we could have camped out in like a tent, and maybe that just becomes, you know, mandatory for some teams to sleep in a tent. Um, the way I could see it working really well is is if they split um, if they can get twice the amount of people for AOS, you could split it and have separate 40k and AOS events. I don't know. Moral of the story is, it was an amazing tournament. I want more people to go. I would love, like, 14 teams next year. I think 20 might be a little much for the venue. But we'll see. Um, I mean, they, they ran a good event, and um, I'm sure they'd figure it out if they got that many more teams. So I'm not overly worried. Um... Yeah, just general things. It was it was good to meet. Um, it was good to meet a lot of people I hadn't met before. Um, like I know a couple people up from the Boston area, um, mainly Josh Hankin, um, but I don't know a lot of like the New England Warhammer players. Um, so like there were a bunch of dudes from Maine and Massachusetts, you know, Connecticut, all around there. Um, and it's a good crowd. It's a good crowd of people up there. They were a lot of fun to play with, uh, play against, and just hang out with. Um, last. Thing Thing. Let's see, what else? The drive was also way better than going to, like, Chattanooga for ATC. It took us, like, 12 hours to get to Chattanooga last time, and this time it took us probably... It took us, like, eight or nine hours to get there with, like, traffic past New York coming up from Maryland. Um, and then, like, we we stopped for food once, and... We, no, we stopped for food twice. So, yeah, we stopped for food twice. Oh, my God, it was a disaster. I, I in my, my utmost brilliance, um, I have a friend that lives in Hartford, and we were picking up Jake, the fifth member of our team, at the Hartford airport, and 
So I was like, oh, great. My, like, my friend John, he lives like 20 minutes from there. I mentioned we were going to this tournament. He was like, hey, like, if the rest of your team is cool, we can meet up for dinner. I could recommend a place. I'm like, great. Good plan. So team was like, sure, we can meet up with your buddy. Um, so he says, meet me at this Bears barbecue place and like send me the link with like the name of the place and the website. Uh, so I go and I look at the link and I see, oh, they have like locations in North Carolina. There's like you know, Asheville or whatever. And then they have locations in Connecticut. And I see they, I see like Hartford, New Haven. So I see like Asheville, you know, somewhere else in North Carolina, Hartford, New Haven, two like city names that I don't know. So you can see where this is going. I was like, surely, obviously, it's not the New Haven one, so it's it's the Hartford location. So we're driving up there, and I'm like, you know, I pull up the directions, and we're like, oh man, this is like, this is like probably 20, 25 minutes from the airport. I'm like, eh, it's kind of on the way, like it's not super far. Like they didn't ring any alarm bells in my head. So we get to the place, and we're in there. I'm like, all right, we're here, and he's like, I'm here too. Like nowhere to be seen. And after five minutes, we're just like, I'm like, oh fuck, like. I'm like, I knew he's out at the New Haven one. Like, where the fuck is he? And it turns out, turns out they had a location like three minutes from the airport. Like, this would have been the most convenient goddamn thing in the entire planet. And I just, I just assumed we were going to the Hartford one because I didn't recognize like Windsor or whatever as being the town in Connecticut where the Hartford airport is. So just, oh, so endlessly embarrassing. Didn't end up seeing my friend. The barbecue was was meh. The the other people on my team were not impressed. Uh, and it was a disaster. So so going in literally into downtown Hartford definitely added to our drive. But anyway, it was a much better drive than going all the way to Chattanooga. And like we're definitely after this tournament, like all of us had a great time. A couple people on the team were like, this is the best tournament that I've ever been to. Like this was a ton of fun. So like we're definitely going back next year. And hopefully get to like send two teams next year or something. We'll see. Um, unless they like they, I think there were also discussions of like doing bigger team sizes, like doing eight people per team, like Worlds is. Um, but either way, whatever. We're, we're hopefully more people from Maryland are going to come up next year because this was a lot of fun. Um, last thing before I get to my games, I'll also say the prize support was amazing. Um, so I, I don't have pictures of the sashes, but they had... Oh, you know what? I can pull up... One second. I can pull up... Surely I still have... No, it's not there. Hold on. Hold on. We're pulling it up. So um, I think it was Miles was one of the organizers, had a good camera, and was like taking pictures the whole time. So here we go. Yeah, so a bunch of pictures from the event from Miles here. Maybe I'll post this link in the video description. Um, right, here we go. So there were everyone who was there for the first time got a, like a little, a little like merit badge, you know, Boy Scout merit badge sash, a uh, little brownie sash, whatever. And then a lot of the um, prizes were, oh, no, go big. Anyway, a lot of the prizes were patches that you get to put on your sash and you bring your sash back every year. And like the first thing we did at the tournament was he was like soliciting ideas for prizes from the groups. So there was like most elves killed, um, middle management, I think was like the middle scoring person on the team or something, or like the most average or something. Um, most battle points, I forgot about that one. Um, you know, best ranked captain as a little <laughs> general hat thing. Most primal dice unused. There was like a most damage done by a spell. Um, yeah, there's that one. Anyway, it was fun. There, there were a bunch of bunch of little prizes like that. Uh, it was very cute. Um, maybe I'll come back to some more of those pictures later. Um, anyway. Um, so yeah, prize support was good. There were a bunch of patches. There were tons, tons of Warhammer boxes. It was not just cute patches. Like, there were... So there was a raffle for a $900 Lumineth army. And then... I think, like, first, last, and second to last... Well, first and last, like, I think essentially also got practically full armies um, worth of, like, box sets. 
and then second to last also got a bunch of boxes, which I, I liked that. Like first place got a bunch of boxes, second and third I think were just trophies mainly, um, and a little bit of other prize support other than the trophies. But then last, so they were like, ah, clearly you need new armies. So like, here's a whole new army for coming in last, which is kind of awesome. And then um, second to last, like probably half as much, but they got a bunch of boxes too. Um, and it was very much in the keeping of the spirit of the event, the event that like we weren't like, obviously people wanted to win, um, but you know, we were bring, drinking a bunch of beer, we were having fun. Um, it was not like the most cutthroat event like anyone's ever been to, right? Um, and I, and I, I liked that a lot. Like there was no prize for like who blew your opponent out of the water the worst in a round, right? Like there was a big prize for like coming in last smoking boots, like a bunch of random prizes for little fun things that you can do during the game. Um, so it was very good. And then the best thing, in my opinion, that we got was, no, oh, just come over here. Um, they had brand new spanking three inch objective markers for fourth edition which was just like the most amazing you know door prize whatever prize thing handout that you could possibly have like this was a brilliant idea they're super cute you know they've got a little middle um marker for the center of the objective they're fun they're cute and now we all got objective markers ready for fourth edition so we're ready to go uh, so whoever's idea that was, brilliant, good job, love it. Um, so getting into the actual games, uh, I am going to pause for a moment because I do have notes this time, and I forgot them, they're in another room, so I will be right back. Alright, I have retrieved my notes, turns out they were still in my car, <laughs> so you can see how good I am at unpacking. Actually, it was the only that little bag was the only thing left in my car. I was I was very proud of myself for unpacking almost everything right away. Uh, after the tournament was done, um, so round one we got matched into K Town Killers, um, which we were looking at the lists and we we're like, actually this might be kind of a hard round. <laughs> they were not the they were not the team that we like had on our radar as like what we thought would be the hardest round for us. Uh, but then looking at it and thinking about pairings, we were like, mm, this could this could be a little hard. Uh, this could be difficult. Um, so I guess I can't really show you the pairing. I can't look at the pairings without spoiling it unless maybe I'll just drag this over here. Well, I failed to drag it. So there they are. <laughs> so, uh, despite, all right. So yeah, so this round we went one and four, um, I won and everybody else lost this round. Um, despite that and despite this result, um, I would say we actually paired pretty well all weekend. Um, we got some of the matchups we wanted, um, we avoided some that we didn't, all that good stuff. Um, so for example, myself into Fire Slayers, um, since I can turn off the Hearthguard four upwards with the Demon Prince, um, we had wanted to get that matchup. Um, so we got that for us. Um, we got Gits into, uh, let's see, Beasts of Chaos, which we thought, I think we thought that was okay. Um, we got Stormcast into Blades of Corn, which I think we thought was like a yellow matchup. Um, Corn's definitely difficult, and we were like, maybe if you can pop all the little heroes early, like, maybe you can get him. Uh, we got Cruel Boys into, I think this was Nighthaunt? No, we got Cruel Boys into Slaves to Darkness, um, and then we put Flesh Eater Quartz into Seraphon. Um, wasn't really sure about Cruel Boys into Slaves. Um, I was just like, you know, chosen to have a ward against mortals at least, so like thinking he could blow that up. Um, but this wasn't host, so I think I think the slave player just did a good job of like cycling in and out of combat and using the five up rally so that nothing ever actually died. Like he would get down to one or two knights and retreat out and then get the turn to, you know rally back up and stuff like that. Um, but my game was against Troy with the Fire Slayers, so this was one that we thought was a green matchup for us. Um, I was, it was a good game. Uh, I thought I should have been able to pull just a little bit more points out of this um, than I did. But I did get the win. Um, you can see here the armies set up. You can see his list on the side. I'll just leave that there. Um, it doesn't fit on one page, but 
you're missing, you know, Faction Terrain, the Infernoth, Grimrath, Berserker, and third unit of um, Sling Shield guys. Um, nothing, nothing super revolutionary. Um, so you can see this was on Fountains of Frost, the one that blows up if you have too many things on it. Um, and yeah, I, I did the obvious thing. I have warriors to kind of move up and hold points. Um, I should say these two things, maybe I'll draw, hold on. Let's go, what would stand out on this? Probably red. Uh, da, 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 da. So these were impassable. Uh, so I was like, warriors can kind of move up the middle and be screens and keep him from getting the Varengard and the Chosen. And then once I'm in combat and some of the warriors die, the Varengard and the Chosen can go in and kill everything, right? And the Demon Prince. Um, Karkardak was over here on the side to go get Surround and Destroy, and the Chariot was over on the other side to get Surround and Destroy. Um, so I did do Surround turn one. He ended up just doing Intimidate turn one he didn't really have another good turn turn one tactic. Um, and then, yeah, basically I moved up the warriors such that if he charged, you know, he wouldn't really be on these points, um, as well as I think I moved up the unmade as well, and, you know, ev whatever, everything moved up. Um, he surprised me turn one because he, so he had both Hearthguard Berserkers over kind of on this flank, with a Volkite there, and then he had two Volkites over here. So he committed both of his Hearthguard units um, onto the same flank, and I was a little surprised that turn two, he did charge both of his Hearthguard units into my Warriors. And at that point, I was like, I think I just win this game now, because he's not going to get through the Warriors. Um, I have the chance to get the 2-3 double, um, I can't remember if he won the priority and took it, or if I won the priority and gave it to him, but either way, uh, there was no double one to two, so I had the opportunity to get the two, three double, um, possibly, and let's see, so yeah, he, I mean, that's what happened, he charged, he didn't kill all the warriors, because how could you, and then the next turn... Get rid of this. Um, yeah, I mean, essentially the next turn. Oop. Oh, I have to re-click that. That's annoying. Uh, which one is it? That's not at all what I wanted. <laughs> there we go. Um, thanks, Windows 11. Still not used to this. Um, anyway, so yeah, he, he charged in. And then in my turn, I, I got the Demon Prince back behind let's get our red back there we go so i got the demon prince behind um i charged the varengard into the unit on the right um the berserkers the hearth guard on the left like really bounced off those warriors pretty hard so you can see there's like five berserkers and five nurgle warriors left and then also the unmade i charged the unmade in to make sure i kept the point um and out countered him. The really annoying thing was that he did well was the um, Infernoth right here was really stopping me from having the Demon Prince turning off the wards of both uh, Hearthguard units at the same time, which is obviously what I really wanted to do, because then I just kind of cleared them trivially. Uh, so what I ended up doing... Oh, I don't know what I just did. <laughs> what I ended up doing was... Um, hold on. I, I obviously you can see I sent I sent the demon prince behind. There was a spot I could land like right about here, and then I charged into the one hearthguard unit. So I had to pick one. So I charged into the one on the right, and I did it in such a way that I was like four inches away from the rune father here, so that um, after the Varengard clear the hearthguard berserkers, which they should do fairly trivially then he can't pile into me because he's more than three away. But since I charged with the Demon Prince, I can pile into the Rune Father if I decide I want to. And I had Flaming Weapon up with the Demon Prince, and I had Turn Off Wards. So with my seven attacks, I needed to get three through, right? Through his saves um, to kill him because he has seven wounds, unfortunately, not six. 
and I do, I'm doing three damage a pop. So I have seven attacks on three threes, Ren two, three damage. And I'm trying to kill this one little seven wound here. And I know that the Demon Prince always fails me, but I decided to try it. So I, I decided to pile in. I had already used all that attack on the Varen Guard, unfortunately. If I had thought harder, maybe I wouldn't have done that. Um, because there was probably a good chance they clear the um there's probably a good chance they clear the, the hearth guard anyway. But anyway, so so the what happened was I did not kill the Rune Father. I only got two through, so I did six damage and left him on one. And then he did like you can see here, he did like nine wounds back to me. And um my demon prince was not long for the world. So unfortunate because yeah. He got the next turn and so he got to strike me first and he did the last wound to the demon prince. So I was I was very disappointed that I was I w okay I was disappointed sorry what I'm trying to say is if I had popped that room father with the demon prince right there I think that was what would have swung this to being a much larger win because then I have the demon prince alive I can heroic recovery him and just heal him back up and then I still have the option to turn off ward saves because there are still other things with ward saves um, and I think that essentially. If I had popped him, I I probably just, yeah, it, it probably is just a much bigger win for me. Like, it's not shocking. Um, the other thing that happened on turn two, so I threw in the chariot into this uh, hero, berserker guy, whatever. Um, he didn't kill me back. Uh, and I got a, you know, I did run and charge with the, the Chosen and got them back into the two units of Volkites here. So I double fought them. And killed, I, I guess this is probably all but three Volkites in that turn. Um, so at this point, I'm like, Karkadrax over here. He's This impassable is actually hugely annoying, because now that I did Surround and Destroy with him, he's just kind of chilling on a flank, not affecting things. Um, it didn't really matter too much here, because I still took this point from him. But like obviously, it would have been nice to have him in position where he could like do a Blizzard the next turn. Um and just, you know, get over here faster. I, I I, could have run him, but I decided to try and make the charge, and I just around this to get to the Volkites, because um, they were probably, like, here. Um, it was probably, like, a 9-inch charge or something, and I just decided to try and take that, um, but I didn't get it, so I didn't get the charge. Um, so the rest of the game, like, as you might imagine, the Chosen cleaned up everything here, and them and the Karkdrak, like, ended up over here. So... Yeah, this turn I done run them down. He then got the turn and did no mercy, which I believe he got. Then I did bait and trap because I had, I had enough things in combat that I could retreat out still. Like I think I think down here maybe I just retreated out. Um, but either way, I did bait and trap, and then I did get the double three to four. Um, so I did the tactic to kill a priest. Um, he did an honorable death, which he also got. And then last turn, I did Intimidate, and then he did not have a turn, uh, Battle Tactic left, turn turn five. Um, so yeah, he did he did a good job of contesting the objectives and like getting, he was generally getting, one, two, three, he got, he got four points every turn until the last turn when he only got two. Because even though he wasn't getting more, he was still getting one, two, and he was still getting his tactics. Um, and obviously he just had the auto grand strat because I don't have a priest and I couldn't get rid of this. Um, so he kept it very close, which I was disappointed in myself in because I thought this could have been a bigger win for me, um, which would have been useful, obviously, because nobody else won their game first round. Uh, and this was like a green matchup that we were hoping I would win a little bit bigger. Um, so yeah, I, and I, I think it, a lot of it did just come down to like, here, I took a risk and tried to pop the Rune Father and I didn't, um... It was, I, th I think it was the right call to try, because um, if I don't do that, he, he got next turn anyway, so then my Demon Prince is just hanging out and didn't do any wounds to the to the Rune Father. Um, I think there was... I don't remember when I used the Varengard double fight. There was a chance that I could have, like, double fought and gotten, like, one Varengard into the Rune Father to finish him off, and I don't remember if I did that or not. Um, but anyway, it was a good game. Um, and I got the win, so that was what I needed to do. Moving on to the next round, 
we paired into you're just you're just gonna see the the round results before I talk about it. Um, we paired into D6 inches unbuffed, who I said in my my previous video um, that like oh I don't know I don't I don't love the whole dick joke thing these days I'm I'm old and crotchety, um, but they they made good on their promise of giving me uh, one of their little widgets their you know their three inch widgets and a sticker so thank you to D6 inches unbuffed um, I I got some swag at least whether or not <laughs> I think it's the best um, logo. Um, I do want to call out, I pulled up this because this was, I think this was Lucas McConnell, um, had just one of the coolest, like, converted armies I've seen. Uh, he was playing KO, but it was all converted to be, like, gits. So the balloons on the boats were all, like, giant puffed up squigs that were, like, filled with gas, uh, on these cool resin water bases and all this shit, uh, and it was super cool. So I got a picture of that. Um, for my game, I played into Iron Jaws this round. Um, I was not sure if this was a good matchup for me. I, it, what, what I thought, sorry, what I thought about this matchup was that I've played Iron Jaws a lot, and I know what they do, and I thought that I could handle it. Um, I thought I could handle the army. Um, I didn't know... I wasn't sure if I could pull out, like, a big win or anything, but, like, I I was like, I can handle Iron Gels. I know what they do. I'm tough in combat. It might get a little bit dicey, but, like, I, I've i got, a, like, a good shot. I've got a good shot. So I took the Iron Gels matchup. Um, in this one, uh, Jake with Gits uh, played Flesh Eater, Quartz, and got a small win. Um, Cruel Boys went into Night Haunt. Which we, I think, were wrong about that matchup. We thought that was a good matchup because he's doing mortals and doesn't care about ethereal saves. And it, I, I think it just turned out the ghosts ran over him. Um, John with Flesh Eater Quartz took Slaves to Darkness and again took a loss but kept it very, very close. Um, and then we put Stormcast in KO, which again we thought was a good matchup. Like I said, with the pairings, like, we, we did the pairings well to get the matchups we wanted. It just turned out that some of the matchups that we wanted were not actually good for us. We were wrong about the matchup. Um, so props to the team and to, like, Jake was the captain um, for, for getting doing the pairings well. Um, and, I mean, <laughs> D6 Inches on Buffed was, like, pick a random person. It's not like they were strategically mapping out their pairing process. So, like... We can only take so much credit <laughs> for getting good matchups or the ones we wanted because, like, you know, I, to some extent they were just full randoming it. Um, but anyway, uh, the, the KO player ended up screening out, screen, screening well against um, Nick and his Stormcast and just blew him out of the water, obviously. And then I ended up winning against Iron Gels pretty big. Um, so the, the crucial part of this game... Whoop, let me it open. I'll, I'll do a pretty short summary of this one, I think. So you can see this was on um, Frigid Zephyr, so like the Mall Crusher couldn't fly the first turn or two, and then I think we forgot to ever roll for it again, but it didn't really matter at that point because the game was decided. So yeah, this was the setup. We were corner to corner. Um, he's got uh, these big things in the middle. I think we were playing Impassable. Um, so he's got pigs on the flanks, brutes, and then brute ragers, and the mall crusher behind, and some characters in there. And again, I have, whoops, sorry, um, I have the warriors in the front, and then I've got the vanguard and the chosen behind, and I was trying to screen out this left flank with, um, the demon prince and the chariot, just like Nurgle stuff. Enough layers of, like, Nurgle stuff that it would be hard to get through all of them into the chosen in, like, one turn was kind of the plan. So, let's see, I got first turn, I think he won priority and gave me first turn. I got five points with a magic dominance, because um, I was outside of unbind range with like these two, um, the Sorcerer Lord and the, and the Karkadrek, I think. Um, he did lead into the Maelstrom, so, so essentially, here we go, I'll pull up the other one. Uh, don't save this, come over here. Um, so essentially what happened in this game, I'm trying to keep these short because um, I actually need, I don't know, I, I want to keep this video at a normal length so that um, 
can talk about it more <laughs> when my teammates are on. That's what I'm trying to say. Ugh. Um, right. So I moved up Warriors into the um, into the middle to block up that space here. I moved up Warriors over here to block the um, pigs getting in. Uh, I should say the reason I was able, like, blocking this space is because this was the garrison and, um, where was it? I think this was the other garrison. We had we had four across the middle and it was the two impassable and the two garrisons. So <laughs> these, these dark, the, the actual terrain here is not particularly indicative of what they are. So yeah, it was garrison, garrison on the edges and then impassable, impassable. So I could, there was, there were, there were gaps that I needed to block up. Um, that was very doable. So I had kind of run the chariot out to here where this big empty space is because the chariots or the Gorgrunt has killed it and the warriors in the middle. And again, I had like a layer of screens here. So he did let in and got it because he charged in, I think a war chanter and the brutes into the warriors here. Um, and he got the double and this almost screwed me. And I, 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 it essentially flipped to a giant win for me off of one very lucky thing. Um, so yeah, his turn, the Gorgrunt, as you can see, killed like six of the warriors, I think. And then the Brutes killed one, two, three, four, five, six, killed four of these warriors. Um, they had Mystic Shield on. So I had like Mystic Shield and the six up ward here from the Sorcerer Lord. And I think I all out defensed up here. And they're neural, like they're hard to kill, right? Um, so when he got the double... He went in to, let's see what happened. He went in with the Maul Crusher and the Pigs over here into like the Karkadrak and the Demon Prince. And I had pulled these warriors on this side thinking that they were going to live and then the Chosen can charge in um, at some point and, you know, they have space to charge in and I'll kill them. What actually happened was he got the double, and he, and actually thinking about this after the game, I was like, I'm not sure he actually could have done this. Uh, but what happened was, um, he did a smart pile in, like, with the brutes to make a little gap here where the brute raiders could get through. So the brute raiders, oh, and I remember why it worked. Yeah, never mind. Uh, I had thought through it enough that it, it does work. So he got the brute raiders, like, over here. And I forgot he has like 3d6 charge. So he made enough of a gap between the impassable and his brutes to be able to fit the brute ragers through. And he got the charge off and got the brute ragers into the chosen. So I was like, oh shit, like the brute ragers are gonna go before the chosen and they're probably gonna do a bunch of damage and like that's gonna be a problem. Like if he neuters the chosen this turn, that's a big issue and, and ties up the Varengard. Like the brute ragers getting in here is a big problem. So the issue was, um, <laughs> the, the game winning event was that he went first with the brutes and he left one warrior alive and didn't kill them. So he was planning to just smoke the warriors and then, um, chain activate the brute ragers. And since the warriors lived, he couldn't chain activate. So I got to go with the chosen before the brute ragers and just wipe the unit immediately. Right? Like... I went, I killed all of them. It, not even an issue, not not even close. Uh, and in addition to that, the Gruntas on his double turn did not kill um, the last warrior they were fighting either. They left him on one wound. So I had three wounds of warriors left that essentially won me the game. Um, because after that, uh, you can see, since the Chosen were free to charge, um, the Chosen charged in and... I split some attacks, so I smoked the Maul Crusher, and I killed, like, one or two pigs off the bat. And then he went and he, like, killed a couple Chosen with the Gruntas, I think. But I double activated, and I also smoked the Gore Gruntas. So the fact that that one warrior lived in the previous turn meant that the Chosen were free, and they just, you know, they wiped this entire flank. They killed the Maul Crusher, and they killed the Gore Gruntas. And because this one lived up here... And because the Brute Ragers had died, the Varengard were free to go and smoke those Gorgrantas. So that was, you know, that was essentially the game, right? Like, I had those two points now on the edges. All of his really hitty shit is dead. He's got Brutes and he's got some characters left. 
So, like, it was just clean up after that point, and, um, yeah, it ended up being an 18-2 win for me. Um, so, yeah, we did better this round. We had two wins, three losses. We still lost the round, um, but again, like, I got a big win that time, Jake got a win, and, like, John kept it very close, so we got, I think, like, 44 points that round, which wasn't that bad, um, so... But still, we're now we're zero and two in rounds. It's not feeling super. Um, so we're like, all right, I you know I guess we're in the beer bracket. We're gonna drink tonight. Had a lot of fun at the campfire. Uh, I'm an Eagle Scout. I love fire. Um, I was I was doing a lot of poking of the fire. Um, found a good stick. Found a good poking stick, which is very important. Uh, and then I I went to bed a little earlier. Three of us went to bed before the other two. Um, and Nick ended up bringing back the poking stick to the um, to the dorm, <laughs> which which will go into the story of day two. Um, I'm gonna pause for a moment and just take a little break, and then I will pick up with uh, game three. All right, so yeah, round three. Uh, let's see. Right, so yeah, Saturday night was fun. Talked about the fire. Lost my train of thought a little bit here. Uh, going into round three, we were 0-2. Like, you know, I, I, I had said in the preview video, like, I would be shocked if we didn't go 2-2. Um, so that was still possible, but, like, we didn't really have any uh, aspirations of, like, the podium at this point, right? Like, whatever. We're 0-2. We're so we're like, all right, we're in the beer bracket. Although we went kind of hard on Saturday, some of us. Um, not necessarily me. I kept things under control. Um, but, you know, Sunday, not going to drink as much Sunday. So, like, we're not giving up. Like, we're going to try. Um, but we're, like, you know, we're obviously not going to podium. Um, so, we played End Times were an in inside job. Um, I played against KO. Um, Gitz went into Slaves to Darkness and had a small win. Um, John, <laughs> poor John, with his feck, played Seraphon again, um, and lost 15 to 5, but then this round, this round is where this turned around, um, our two lists that we brought to be, like, skew lists that we thought could blow some people out of the water and, like, get big wins, uh, did that this round. So, uh, Steve Cole with Crew Boys, he played Sylvaneth with like Alariel, Belthanos, etc. Um, like all the big monsters and just blew them up <laughs> and got a big win. Um, and then Nick with Stormcast played Teclas Lumineth and blew up Teclas and everyone else and also got a win. So, um, you know, we were three and two this round, so we got our first round win. Um, and I ate the KO matchup. Um, I knew this was a hard matchup. I thought there was a chance that I could pull something out. Um, obviously, it did not happen. Um, this was my... I mean, this... I, I lost, you know, whatever. Obviously, to some extent. Uh, but this was my roughest round, um, for sure. Where is my pictures? I should have a picture or two of this. So he had 10 Thunders, um, 6 Endron Riggers, and the Ironclad, and he had Gotrek. So this was the Gotrek KO list. Um, we put me into this because, as I said in my preview, preview video, all I want to do this edition is run the Demon Prince into Gotrek and turn off his wards. And not only did I fail to win the game, I failed to get the Demon Prince into Gotrek and turn off his ward save and kill him. I didn't even... I never even fought Gotrek with the Demon Prince. I, I fought Gotrek with 10 warriors. That was the only time Gotrek was in combat. And thus, I failed miserably at my, my goal. Um, so that was disappointing. Um, this was against Dan, uh, Daniel. And yeah, this, this game, I feel like I got lucky to have a chance in this game. And then I messed up enough that I squandered the chance I got by being lucky, if that makes sense. Um, so essentially, you can see over here, he's measuring out where he's putting his ironclad. Um, 
up in this. Uh, this is a garrison, and that's Gotrek sitting in the garrison, which is kind of where he sat for three turns of the game. Uh, just if I remember right, might have been less than that. Two or three turns, he kind of just sat in the garrison, zoning things out. This was on every step as forward. Um, so you can see he gave me first, um, unfortunately, because he was a one drop, I believe. Um, so I just moved up onto points with warriors, trying to zone out him shooting the um, the Chosen or the Varengard too badly, and very much trying to keep the Demon Prince alive back in the back with the hopes that he could then come out later and then, like, you know, turn 2-3, like, get into Gotrek or something. Um, Karkadrak is under his hand down here. The Chariot's up here. Um, this is one... I don't remember if... I think, yeah, this, this and this were the impassables, I believe. Um in the bottom right and the top left. Um, so I did Magic Dom first turn and got it and got five points because I moved on to the two points. He did opening salvo turn one and just blew up, you know, he blew up the unmade, which it didn't end up, didn't end up mattering. I'm like, maybe I should have kept the unmade safe because turning off redeploy and rally is really important. Um, but I didn't. He blew them up for the tactic first turn. Honestly, if he had focused everything on the warriors, I'm sure he also could have killed the warriors for the tactic, um, but he didn't. Um, I thought, honestly, I thought he put a little too much into the unmade, but like secure your tactic, it's fine. Um, so he got four points because he he got onto this one and this one, turn one, but didn't take one of the ones I had back for me. So it was five four. Um, my turn. I had to go for Lust for Power, because I felt like I didn't really have a good chance at any of their tactic. So I went for Lust for Power essentially just as like a second Magic Dom, and I believe did Chaotic con Yeah, right, I did Chaotic Conduit onto my General from himself, um, and that's where I was like, I could roll double ones here and just, you know, lose my Grand Strat right off the bat. I did not turn into a spawn. So I did get that. Um, I did not get... Um, I did not get more this time, so I got four points this time as well. Um, I believe, I believe turn two, turn two, all right, turn two, I thought I was going to win. There was, this is where I had a chance to win. So essentially what happened, you can see his boat's over here. He's like carefully measuring. He knows there's a chance I can get in with the Slanesh chosen, but like is far enough away that it's not a good chance. Like I was going to have... It would, it, you know, it would depend on the, the run roll, if I roll the run instead of auto-sixing the run, like, stuff like that, how far it was going to be. I think if I auto-sixed the run, I was going to have, like, a 9-inch charge. And it's not re-rollable, right? Because you have to use the command to run and charge. So he was kind of taking that risk. Um, so, yeah, he blew up the unmade. He blew up, like, half the warriors. My turn, I move up the warriors... He doesn't redeploy. Um, I've got like two CP, I believe. Um, first general. I, I, I think I didn't roll another one. I forget what I did for my uh, heroic. Um, but I did run. What I ended up doing was I was like, I will roll the run for the chosen. I'm not going to spend the CP. And like, if I roll a one or a two, like obviously there's no chance of getting into the boat this turn and like I can adjust my plan accordingly and try and play from there. I was like, if I roll high, then there's a chance I get into the boat and like that would be amazing, right? So I rolled a five and they get plus one to run. So I got the six to run, right? Without needing anything. Um, so the chosen got over to here and in my, in the, in the combat phase, I was like, all right, I'm gonna charge the warriors in in case I get the charge off on the Chosen, because I need to eat the Unleash Hell. If I don't eat the Unleash Hell, half the fucking Chosen are going to die before they get in. Um, and they already had... there were These are two wounds on the Chosen, I believe. So there were two wounds on the Chosen already. So the Warriors got in, and then the Chosen rolled an 11. So they had a 13 to charge. So they, they made it in. They got, you know, they got all the way over here. Um... 
Unfortunately, K was bullshit, and I hate them uh, <laughs> for every reason. They're horrible. Sorry for being salty during the game, Daniel, uh, about the fact that KO are the worst. But I was absolutely a little salty during the game, um, just because it was nonsense. He, he was also talking about how, like, oh, they've eaten so many points nerfs and stuff, and it was terrible, and, like, you know, just felt bad. And I was like, well, they totally deserved it, because they were oppressive and awful. <laughs> so I was like, I was just kind of like, I have no pity, man. Like, I'm sorry, but they deserved all the points hikes, and... They're, they're just the worst to play against. Um, he, he did have a good point that he you know, he was saying that he wished um, that they had hit the battle tactics rather than points. Because um, a big part of KO being a, such a big problem is they have so many just like auto battle tactics, right? Get in the boat. Get out of the boat. Shoot the thing. Shoot the thing off of the objective. Like, it's just all the stuff you're... It's four turns of stuff that you were going to do anyway. And it's just ridiculous. So he, he did have a very good point that like it... It would have kind of felt better to um, hit the tactics rather than like so many points increases because he was just sad that like he was like I remember at the start of the edition I had so much more on the board than I have now like you know just don't get to play with my toys so anyway um, so I got lucky I got the chosen into the boat and I'm like at this point now I'm like fuck like do I target the boat and try and smoke the boat do I hit the engine riggers like what do I do. Obviously, the Endrin riggers um, are, are minus one to hit because they're, like, in the boat. Um, oh, God. And the other thing was my Magic Dom... Was it Magic Dom? God, oh, that's right. The Magic Dom turn, I miscast my first cast with the Sorcerer Lord, and then I miscast with the Demon Prince. That's why there's two wounds on the Demon Prince there. And then I... You know, I, I got Arcane Bolt off or something stupid on the fucking Karkadrak. Because I think I had tried Mystic Shield the first cast with the Sorcerer Lord. So, like, I miscast twice already. I almost failed all of that. And then, um... He, he had popped the Pouch of Noldos. Right. He popped the Pouch of Noldos and I rolled double twos twice in a row. Uh, which was just miserable. Um... So, the... The moral of that story was that for whatever reason, I didn't have uh, demonic power on the chosen, so they were not like, they were not like super buffed up. I didn't have. Did I get? I might have gotten hoarfrost on them, right? I didn't have demonic power. I, all right, I think what happened was, if I'm remembering right, no, I didn't have hoarfrost either. Never mind. So I definitely I had to cast chaotic conduit to get my tactic right. And then maybe I just failed Hoarfrost or Demonic Power. Like, maybe I rolled a 1 and a 5 or something and then, like, didn't want to throw a Primal at it. I, th I think something like that. Anyway, so the moral of the story is I wasn't on, like, 2s and 2s with the Chosen. So, like, the minus 1 to hit from being in the boat would have hurt if I did the Endron Rigger. So I was like, fine. I was like, I'm just going to target the boat. If I kill the boat and everything pops out of the boat... Like, I'm probably sitting pretty to win the game, right? Like, you don't have the tactics to get in and out of the boat anymore, and your dwarves are not that mobile. Of course, looking ahead, what I was forgetting is, of course, like, the goddamn Endron Riggers are still 12-inch move, even after you get them out of the boat. And it is disgusting, and just, god, I hate it. I hate, like, you put in all of the work to get in the boat, and the Endron Riggers pop out and just fly across the board and murder whatever they want. Spoilers. <laughs> um... So anyway, the the thing I messed up here, which probably would have won me the game if I remembered, was I forgot that I had the Inspired Triumph, and I was less points than him, so I could have um, gone plus one to wound on the Chosen, and that, so what I ended up doing was I, I did not all out attack the Chosen. I was like, I don't think I quite pop the boat with one round of attacks or i might but like either way i wanted to save my command point for all out defense on the chosen to survive better all the attacks back coming from like the ren to ender riggers and yada 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 right this this was the big mistake if i had remembered i had inspired and i could have gone to twos and twos against the boat with um inspired plus all out attack i absolutely would have all out attacked and there's a very good chance that I would have popped the boat on the first activation. 
So instead, I was saving all at defense to try and survive until so I could double fight if I needed to pop the boat on the second fight, right? Because um, the boat is going to be on a three-up save against my Ren 1 with all at defense, and then I've got some mortals coming in, and et cetera, et cetera. Um, so what ended up happening was, this is the other just kick in the dick from fucking KO, is that... Uh, He's got that supremacy mine or whatever. I don't know. It does like D6 mortals or something the first time it fights. So he rolled, you know, he rolled like a four or something and killed my, he killed two chosen, right? Before I even got to fight. So I was just like, shit. I forgot about, I, I, well, I didn't forget about it. I, I, I don't know. Maybe I knew it was a thing at some point, but I wasn't thinking about it. That's for sure. I was just thinking about getting rid of the Unleash Hell. Uh, so, um, I, you know, I lost two, I lost eight attacks right off the bat. Like, I also could have probably smoked the boat right off the bat if I had all ten chosen. So what ended up happening was I did 15 wounds to the boat. He got to attack. He got to attack back with everything before my strike last second fight. I had, like, a couple chosen left after he was done. And I attacked back, and I think I just... Maybe I even... I might have even done 17 wounds to it in the first fight. But... I think the second fight, I just rolled enough sixes right off the bat to hit that it just blew up the boat. So I got the boat. But the Chosen were, you know, low enough. They might have even... They might have even Battleshocked off that turn. Or, or like, I let the Warriors Battleshock off. or something. I don't know. Whatever. I got the boat, but essentially I had to sacrifice the Chosen to do it. Whereas, if I had thought about the Triumph, I think I would have all it attacked and plus one to wounded and got in the boat in the first fight and not worried about how much damage I took back. And then just with, with whatever I had left, I would have done some damage to what he had pop out of the boat. Um, and the other thing was, oh, right. And the other reason that would have been big is because the way he would have had to deploy everything when it pops out of the boat, when it dies, he would not have had as many attacks coming back into me in his fight phase. Like, he probably would have had one or two characters that were out, or, like, some of the Arcanauts. He probably would have put all the Endron Riggers in. But it would have been... It would have just been a little bit less damage coming in because he wouldn't have had everything, I don't think, within four inches to, like, pile in and attack with an inch. Maybe, maybe the... Maybe all the guys have enough range and, it, like, he could have gotten it. But I... I think that was the big struggle point for me where I messed up was I just I just forgot inspired I didn't use it when I should have and that was bad um, that's essentially the same picture this is the last game yeah so so what happened from there um, he did blast him off the point or whatever and killed whatever was around there to get his tactic and got five. So we're tied 9-9 after turn two. Um, I got the next prio and did let in and got five points. So I I think I ran this way and tagged the Arcanauts there. He had moved Gotrek out at that point um, and had the Arcanauts kind of around Gotrek. And... I had, I measured, so there was a little bit of a unfortunate interaction here where like, I, I had like thrown my primal die over and like knocked over a couple things and was like, oh my God, I'm sorry. Like put it back however you want. <laughs> I did not mean to chuck it into your unit. Um, so he put all the guys back and um, then later I, you know, I charged the warriors in and I did not want to engage Gotrek and have him in combat. And he had a couple Arcanaut little dudes sticking out far enough that, like, I could be within a half an inch of them and not be within three of Gotrek and then, like, not pile in. And he was a little frustrated, but he was also, like... First of all, I think even before the dice hit it, I don't even think the die hit the dude that I was going into, but also he was just like, ah, you know, you did say I could put them back however I wanted, like, that was on me, whatever. But it was just unfortunate that I would accidentally hit things with dice and, like, muddled things up a little bit. Um, so yeah, I had I charged the ch the warriors in over there and like kept Gotrek out for a turn. Um, his the the big issue was his Endron Riggers. You know they popped out here. They flew twelve all the way over to here. I guess Ko get a once per game three to six charge. I mean he told me that at the beginning of the game. I kind of forgot. So then he charged like thirteen inches over here, 
Um, the Karkadrak had retreated, and the Sorcerer Lord was here as well, and I thought I was kind of safe. I was, like, behind the impassable, I, like, I couldn't get shot. And so he, he moved 12 and rolled, like, a 13-inch charge and just plopped his Ender Niggers between them and killed both of them. Um, there was, I don't know, it, whatever, that's all I'll say about that. <laughs> so he got them, he could deny me my grand strat. Um, I will also say... Yeah, there. Yeah, so sorry. So the Ender Niggers were there. I then made a mistake. I then made my other big mistake was uh, his admiral was like here, and I charged. I like charged the Varengard and the Demon Prince into the Ender Niggers, and I did it such that if I popped the Ender Niggers, then the Varengard could pile in three with the double fight towards the. Um, uh, the Admiral. There we go. The Admiral, and, like, maybe get two in, and, like, pop in, maybe, was kind of the play. I should have just, I should have just freaking committed to killing the Enderdurgers, because I ended up just outthinking myself. Um, the really stupid thing I ended up doing was, I don't, and I don't know why I did this, he, he took advantage of the opportunity I gave him. I went in with, you know, I attacked with the Demon Prince first, which was stupid, because the Varigard probably just cleared it. And even if they don't, this problem doesn't then crop up. So I went with the I went with the Demon Prince first. I don't know why I killed like two Enderniggers, and he pulled the ones closest to the Varengard, so that when the Varengard fight to get any into the Enderniggers, I was gonna have to pile in this way and like not be able to do the little pile towards this guy. So he he did that well. He pulled the right guys. He like piled in towards yeah he, yeah he pulled and then he piled in like around the Demon Prince, so it made it even harder. So I was I just I was a complete idiot not doing the Varengard first and just smoking the damn Ender Nurgers. Um so that was that was my other big mistake. And from there, uh, you know, I'm down my grand strat, although so is he, because I got the boat. Um I got five turn three, he got four. He did the nullstone tactic to just like be contesting an objective with the nullstone guy. Um then his turn four he did Intimidate, and basically, like, Gotrek had cleaned up the Warriors and shit over here, and, like, he had gone to take this point, and essentially all I had left was the Varengard. So I got, and I think he shot a bunch of them. I think I had, like, two or three Varengard left after his turn. Because um, it turns out even ten Thunders is, is a lot of Thunders. <laughs> um, a lot of shooting. So, like, my turn, I got zero my turn, and we just... Scored it out. So he got 21 to my 14, and it was like a small win. Um, I am going to do at some point a video of just like etiquette things, things to think about when you're playing to like make it be a good game and blah, blah, blah. Um, so I will mention this again then. But um, one thing I would say that you should do in all of your games, when you roll to hit, and wound, whatever, when you roll your dice and you're like taking out all your misses, just like ask your opponent, hey, do you see any misses that I didn't see? Or like, whatever, before you pick up all your dice. Because there was like two or three times this game <laughs> where I just watched him pick up a one, like to hit. And I was like, no, wait, oh, stop. Like, and like he put, like he, you know, he had put a couple dice into the miss pile. And like one of the dice I saw in the miss pile was like a five. So I was like, I can't tell if he just saw that there were three misses and picked up three dice, not caring which dice he picked up, or, like, if he didn't see the one and so he had an extra hit, and uh, it was, like... And, like, I was, so, like, there was, like, two times where he picked up the dice, and I was like, there was a, uh, there was a one in there. there! You just picked up a one! And he's like, oh, sorry, like, I didn't see it, but, like, now I picked up all the dice, and so he's like, I, I guess I'll take one out, but I'm just like, oh my god, just, like, just ask me if I see any before you pick up all of your dice. Just like, just give me like literally one more second to like point out that there's a one there that you missed before you pick them all up. Like that's all I want. <laughs> so I, that was just it. Just happened like two or three times, and I think the first, I think the first time I didn't even say anything. I was just like, oh, I saw him like, saw him pick up a one, but he like had put some dice into the miss pile. Like he might just not be, he might just be taking out the number of misses he saw. I don't know. I didn't say anything the first time, and then the second time I was like, nope, stop, stop it. You're picking up your dice too fast. I saw a one. Please stop picking them up. So, like, oh my god. It was very stressful. So, I was playing KO. It was a stressful game. I'm not saying he was cheating. I'm just saying, as a general practice, 
and I don't always remember this, but like try to give try to remember to just like give your opponent time to see the dice. And like I I sometimes feel bad because sometimes I like there's not like a good place in between us to roll the dice, and so I'm kind of rolling on like my side of the board, and like I'm worried that my opponent won't see like my dice roll. I don't know. I, I try very hard to make sure that people know that nothing sketchy is going on. We all assume that nobody's doing anything sketchy, but it's just good to be able to confirm, and it's good to be able to see like the dice your opponents are rolling. That's all I will say about that. Um, that that'll, that'll go into the etiquette video as well. Uh, and also, I should just get a dice tray, because if I feel like I don't have good places to roll dice, I should just get a dice tray. Um, so that was that round... This is right. So we won that round. So now we're like, all right, we're we're one and two now in rounds. We can at least go two and two, and we go into round four and we paired down to the O three team, the Hot Dogs, um, and we did get the win. So we went four and one in the round this time, uh, and we got a big win off the Hot Dogs. So this was another one where like they were just kind. I think. They, they asked if we wanted to just do random pairings, and we were like, no, we're tryhards. Like, we want the points. We want the points. Um, so we were tryharding. We are like, let's just do the actual pairings. Um, so we did, and we got, like, we kind of got all the pairings we wanted, except for poor John had to play Seraphon for the third time this tournament. The man is a saint. He played Seraphon for us all weekend, and he got a big win in this one. Um... I played Stormcast and got a big win. Um, I knew that should be a good matchup. I play a kind of similar Stormcast list, and I didn't think it could do enough to me. Um, Nick got to live the dream and play Night Haunt and just blow everything up and got a 20 0. Uh, Jake played Gitz uh, against Feck and got a 17 3. And then Steve lost to Blaze of Corn, which is a rough matchup. Well, I mean, it's a rough matchup in that Corn is always tough. Corn is a top army. Um, uh, yeah, blah, words. Um, my game, his Stormcast list was like, I, I should have been showing lists, sorry. Uh, da, 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 da. This was the KO, nope, no it wasn't, I'm lying. Where's the KO list? There we go, that Daniel. So yeah, KO was Navigator, Admiral, Endron Master, Argonauts, Endron Riggers, Thunders, I, I mostly said this. Um... And the hot dogs, the Stormcast list was Austin. So he had like the light version of Nick's list, right? With the mortal wounds. He had Celestine Prime, three Judicators, one Vexilor, the Imperitant, some Grand Hammers, Liberators, Liberators, Chariot, and some Raptors. And the Comet. And he had all of the uh, Holy Commands. So the story of this was he just did his stuff. Me turn one, and it wasn't enough to kill a bunch of heavily armored slave guys. And uh, one second, and then I killed him. <laughs> All right, I'm I'm trying the end of this video again. I completely messed up when I was paused and not paused uh, after this point <laughs> in my original recording. So I lost probably, I don't know, just the last five minutes uh, by just being the complete opposite of what I thought in terms of being paused or not paused recording. Um, oh my gosh, the, the, the recording software that I use, um, when you pause it, the button doesn't like change to then a play button to like go back to not pausing to, to recording. So I, w I was literally saying while well, paused and I thought I was recording, oh, this is so confusing, you know, I... I always think I'm going to mess this up, and I and I did mess it up. So um, I'll do I'll, I'll quick redo the recap here of um, oh, and that now I'm now I'm ruining things by showing no nobody saw that over on the left um, <laughs> ruining everything. It's a disaster. Um, right. So the recap of this game beyond just he didn't kill all my stuff and then I killed all his stuff, um, which was kind of what I expected with the matchup. Like, Slaves is a lot of beef and heavily armored and stuff, and I and I thought I could eat his, like, initial burst of damage in terms of, like, the AoE mortals from the Judicators and all that stuff. Um, 
he was a lot of drops, and I made him go first. Not shocking. It's what had been happening to him all weekend. Um, and, and, you know, he said after the game, maybe even during the game, he was like, you know, I know that if I get doubled one to two, like, it's pretty over because he can't really take the double. Um, I was a little surprised at how hard he sent it first turn, but, like, I don't know. It's the last game. Why not? Um, they were 3 Like, no, you're not in contention. So, um, you know, just just send it. Um, so he did that. So I gave him first, and um, I had I had deployed just to try and screen out all of the AOE mortals, like off of my characters and stuff like that, while still being able to set up for a tactic turn one. Um, so I think I was trying to set up for surround turn one, which is kind of the usual thing. Um, it ended up not being what I did. Um, <laughs> so. The, the way it turned out, I should have deployed it a little differently, but I essentially I left um, down here um, below this tower. I knew I had left a little bit of space um, where the unit of Grand Hammers could land with a 7-inch deep strike deploy thing. Um, one second. Right, so in, in a shocking twist, he did exactly that. He put the Annihilators down here, and I and I knew they were going to have a charge onto the Chosen, and I just hoped that he wouldn't kill them all. <laughs> I was like, I know I'm going to all out defense there, um, and like hopefully it'll be fine. And I pretty much screened everything out. I had like, you know, I had Warriors, Warriors in the front, and some Unmade, and then I had like the Varengard over here, and the Chosen over here. And so he was kind of mortal, he put a couple of his mortal wound bombs in the middle of all of that. Uh, my Sorcerer was like far enough away to not really take any damage. And so, like, he killed some warriors, he killed some, a couple of Chosen with that. I don't know if he killed even a single Varengard. Um, but he got, he charged in the Stormcat, uh, the Chariot. Um, he charged in the Annihilators. The Chariot was into the Warriors. Um, and then he did bring the Celestine Prime down turn one as well, which surprised me because generally you want to bring him down turn two to have more attacks for the rest of the game. Um, but, uh, he, yeah, he pretty much brought everything down. I felt so bad for him because he failed magic dominance turn one. He had the re-rollable cast from the Imperitant out of range of Unbinds for the Comet, uh, and he failed it both rolls. So he rolled like a three, so he didn't want to throw Primal Dice at it, and then he rolled like a four or five, and it needs a six. So I was just like, oh no, it's all going wrong already for you, I'm sorry. Um, and the other thing, uh, the other thing that was terrible for him is he forgot to shoot with the Celestine Prime the turn he brought it down, which was like kind of the reason he brought it down turn one. Um, and if he had remembered to shoot, he maybe would have um, completely killed the chosen unit. So as it was, the I think the chariot actually finished wiping the warriors because i couldn't inspire and presence them and there were like two left and they battle shocked i think um between all of the shooting and the wounds and stuff like mortals bombing in um and then the chosen were left with i think two models after the annihilator charged and fought um so those two were able to just kill back <laughs> the um uh the Annihilators. And I, I had to use the double fight to do it, but I double fought the two remaining Chosen and killed the Annihilators. Um, so that, you know, if... I, I had to Inspiring Presence them, and then... But if the... Um, yeah, if, if the Celsius Prime had shot, it might have just killed it. There were, like, four wounds left or something. Um, so... Yeah, I, I... Killed the Annihilators, and then in my turn, I, like, rallied a Chosen back, and they killed the Chariot, and, like, everything on this flank just moved up and killed the Liberators that were here. They killed the first Adjudicator of the three. Um, the Chosen... I, I got the one-two double, so sorry. He got three points turn one, because he didn't get Magic Dom. I did run them down to charge three units turn two, and got five. My turn, I got the double. So I did Lust for Power to take a point back with a character. Um, so I think... Maybe I didn't... Did I actually take this? I forget what happened. I, it must have been the Karkadrak moved to take maybe this point 
turn two, although this looks like it's turn three. Let me delete some lines. Um, let me think for a second. Yeah, thinking about it more, I may have actually just done Catac Conduit onto the Sorcerer Lord again um, to get Lust for Power. I think I was thinking that the Karkadrak would take a point, and then I... he maybe didn't. <laughs> I, th I think I just did uh, Catac Conduit. Um, so, yeah, but but my, you know, my turn two, the Warriors chose... <laughs> chose... Warriors charged the Liberators. The Varengard also charged in. They, I don't know if they double fought. They may have double fought to like get back onto the, that Judicator. But like, you know, turn two, a full unit of Varengard is in his back line. Um, the Chosen also, after they killed the Chariot, then rallied like two more back and charged the Celestin Prime and ended up killing him. Um... So yeah, after turn two, he's like, most of his army is dead. His army's crippled, at least. Um, he did get five points turn three. He did secure the battlefield. Uh, sorry, his turn two, he did he got five points and did secure the battlefield. So he like retreated one or two things out. He like ran dogs around. He brought the last liberators down on that point. So he like won. He took that point, that point. This is, of course... Um, he also he, he had more than me because this was um, the one where you siphon the meltwater limited resources. Um, so having had a couple of the points two turns in a row, they they were turned off for me. Um, so like this one was turned off. So he got five points. Um, but then at that point it was like he didn't get the double back. I got the priority turn three. So then it was just like all right, well Varengard go in and kill the Imperitant and the Long Strikes, and they're gonna kill the Vexilor at some point. Like I got the other Judicators back here. The Prime was dead, uh, at least at the end of turn three, if he wasn't at the end of turn two. Um, and the Warriors just, you know, I had enough Warriors alive. They just went back and took this point back from the Liberators, so they couldn't hold it and score. Um, I just remember, I just realized I had all the other pictures up. Um, so yeah, so and then that was that was basically the game, right? Like turn three, I cleaned up. Pretty much all of his army except some random like griff hounds running around so he got one point turn three he did win prio turn four and got two more points um i should mention i failed uh i failed turn three my tactic uh i, I took iconoclasts to kill a priest or a totem uh, thinking i was going to charge the varengard into this um vexilor and he got like the six inch redeploy to bail off to the side and I didn't get the charge off on him. So I did, I dropped that tactic. He was doing a good job of trying to pull out points, but like he was way, you know, he was way down uh, just in terms of how much army was left on each side. Um, so I, I scored four points, turn five to his zero. I got the grand strat, so it was 25, 11 to me. So uh, back to the thing I spoiled. So we were 2-2, two, two. we won both our rounds in uh, on day two. So it ended up, we were in third. <laughs> we had looked after the round at the scores, and when we looked, um, when we looked, K-Town Killas were marked as their last round being a draw, I think. So they were in third and we were in fourth. So we were like, ah, you know. We, we just barely missed the podium, but we, like, did well. We came in fourth. Like, we went 2-2. Two, two. Like, that's nothing to complain about. Um, but I guess there was some error in, like, the scores or something, and they corrected it. And so it ended up Damage Inc. was 4-0 and obviously came in first. Miscasters Anonymous were the only 3-1, so they came in second. And then there were six teams that were 2-2. Two, two, and we just, you know, I guess we kept our losses close enough, and then we scored. We, we scored especially high that last round, but... We, we had enough points to be the top team, the top of the six, two, two, and two, and two teams. Um, so we, like, unexpectedly got third, which was awesome. Uh, super happy with that. Um, we got a, um, like I said, the prize support was really good, but we got trophies, we got, like, the objective mats, and I think we got, like, a brush set. Um, but the trophy is cool. I, I now have, 
I have a couple trophies there up on my uh, display board, or on top of the display case, rather. Um, so I have our third place team tournament trophy from ATC last year, a little dinky one. And now I have a bigger third place hammer trophy from Spring Retreat with a cool like mountain motif on it. Uh, so now I've got dueling hammers up on top of my display board, or display case, I keep saying display board. Um, the other important thing is I mentioned the poking stick <laughs> for the fire. So Nick brought this stick that I was poking the fire with Saturday night uh, back to the dorm. And on Sunday, uh, we brought it out, you know, we just brought it with us for, for the games. And Jake was using it as the pairing stick. So he was like holding it up and like the, the stick was guiding us to our pairings. And so we went 2-0 day two with the pairing stick after going oh two day one so i brought it home and it's sitting up on my display case with my trophies so we are bringing the pairing stick back next year which we will clearly sail to an easy 4-0 uh having the pairing stick for both days that is that is the hope anyway um so yeah in summary it was it was a very good tournament we all had a ton of fun we all want to go back next year um I said this earlier, but I'll probably do another video with one or two of the people from my team as well on it, um, on the video, um, to just chat with them and like get their views of the tournament and hear about their games. Um, so that will come soonish. Uh, yeah, it was good to, good to meet a bunch of New England Warhammer people, a um, bunch of cool dudes. Uh, it was a good tournament, said that already. I'm rambling now. I'm all I'm all thrown off by losing this last close close out of my original video, but whatever. You don't want to hear me talk anymore, so I will stop and I will see you next time.